all of us are aware of Egypt pyramids. Few of the ecologists have used this idea of pyramid to show the relationship between different organisms in an existing food chain. In simple words, an ecological pyramid is defined as the graphical representation of the tropic level or feeding level of an ecosystem by considering the shape of a pyramid. It was first introduced in the year 1927 by a British ecologist named Charles Elton. In this ecological pyramid, producers are represented at the base, followed by the other consecutive tropic levels namely primary, secondary and tertiary placed one over the other with carnivores at the top. The pyramids are classified into three types. Pyramid of Numbers Pyramid of Biomass Pyramid of Energy Let us study about these pyramids one by one in detail. First, let us learn about Pyramid of Numbers. Biologists have compared the number of organisms present at each link in the chain along with food relationships between them. Let us consider a food web to compare the number of organisms present in each stage of food chain. The organisms in a food chain are represented graphically in the shape of a pyramid. The pyramid of numbers shows the number of organisms in each tropic level. Generally, from primary consumers to the large carnivores, the size of the living things increases but the number decreases. In our food chain pyramid, the grasshoppers are small insects which are found in large numbers on plants to suck the juice of leaves. The insectivorous bird which feed on these grasshoppers are large in size but present only in small numbers. Further, there may be only a single pair of hawks much larger than the insectivorous birds which they prey. In some cases, the pyramid of numbers does not look like a pyramid. This happens when the producer is large like a tree or if any of the organism is small at any tropic level. So always keep in mind that the producers will be at the bottom of the pyramid. Now, let us learn about pyramid of biomass. Biomass is an organic material of biological origin that is derived from the fixation of carbon dioxide by trapping solar energy during photosynthesis. This includes trees, shrubs, grasses, crops, algae, aquatic plants, agriculture and forest residues and all forms of human, animal and plant waste. In other words, biomass is the pot in any plant or animal that can be converted into energy. When these materials are used for energy production, they are termed as biofuels. Pyramid of biomass represents the relationship between the quantity of living matter at different trophic levels in a food web or a food chain. In other words, the pyramid of biomass shows the energy lost in each tropic level. The biomass present in each tropic level is always less than the level below it. This is because biomass is the measure of amount of food available. When animals eat, only a small amount of their food gets converted into new tissue, which in turn forms food for the subsequent tropic levels. We can say that in a food chain, Biomass is the food for the next tropic level. Biomass is equal to bio, life, plus mass, weight. There are two types of biomass pyramids. They are Upright pyramid of biomass, Inverted pyramid of biomass. Now, let us learn about these two types. Upright pyramid of biomass. This occurs when the larger net biomass of producers support a smaller weight of consumers. Example, forest ecosystem. Inverted pyramid of biomass. This occurs when the smaller weight of producers support consumers of larger weight. Example, aquatic ecosystem. 
Let us learn about the pyramid of biomass in detail by considering an example. In the pyramid of biomass shown on the screen, the producers are the plant planktons which are present on the surface of the sea. They trap energy from the sunlight. The animal plankton or zooplankton feed on these microscopic plants and the fish in turn feed on the animal plankton. Finally, these fishes become food for the humans, present at the top of the tropic level. The pyramid of biomass for this particular food chain is as follows. In this particular food chain, almost 90% of food is lost at each step. Suppose, if phytoplankton uses 1000 kg of total mass from the sun to produce 100 kg of total mass. The zooplankton produce 10 kg of total mass to the fishes. These fishes in turn produces 1 kg of human tissues with a corresponding loss of the original plant potential energy that came from the sun. Thus, we can conclude that fewer the steps in food chain, there will be more energy for the species at the top. Pyramid of Energy We all know that food is the main source of energy for the growth and regeneration of all organisms. Generally, the food will be in the form of chemical energy and when stored, turns into potential energy. Different mechanisms in organisms continuously absorb materials to produce organic matter and to convert and release the same into inorganic form. Example Plants absorb minerals from the soil through their roots. Photosynthesis is an important process in plant life. Plants use all the necessary things like energy from sunlight, water and carbon dioxide to produce food for living things. Thus green plants are the producers of food to all living things in the world. The food chains and food webs help in the transfer of food and energy from one tropic level to other tropic level, that is from producers to different consumers. Animals either obtain the food from the plants or from other animals or from both. Generally, in every case, the origin of food starts from the plants, producers. Example, curd that we eat is processed from milk, which comes from a cow. This cow in turn feeds on grass. When the food is eaten by different organisms, it will not be fully digested and assimilated. The food materials such as hair, feathers, insect exoskeletons, cartilage, bone in animal food, cellulose and lignin in plant foods cannot be digested by most of the animals. These materials are either ejected by defecation or regurgitated. Assimilated energy is the one which is not lost even through respiration or excretion. This is available for the synthesis of new biomass through growth and reproduction. Generally, organisms lose some biomass during death, disease or annual leaf drop and follow the pathway of food chain, that is after death and decomposition of organisms, the materials flow back into the environment. The remaining biomass is finally consumed by herbivores and their energy is consumed by the higher tropic level of the ecosystem. This is a cyclical process, that is the materials enter into the living beings and in the process of death and decay, they again return to the soil and finally reach the atmosphere. This flow of materials between organisms and their environment is called cycling of materials or mineral circulation or biogeochemical cycles. In class 9, we have already learned about the cycling of materials. Let us learn how the energy enters the producers in the ecosystem. In the ecosystem, the energy enters the producers from the sun in the form of solar energy or solar radiation. Only the green plants and photosynthetic bacteria containing chlorophyll producers are capable of absorbing solar energy and converting it into chemical energy. From the producers, the chemical energy passes to the consumers from one tropic level to the other 
through food. During each tropic level, organisms use most of the food energy to fulfill their metabolic requirements, performance of work, growth and reproduction. As the biological energy transformations are inefficient, a substantial portion of metabolized food is lost or released in the form of heat. Only a small amount of food goes to the next tropic level. In a way, organisms are same as the man-made machines. Example, most of the energy in gasoline is lost as heat in a car's engine rather than being transformed into the energy of motion. In natural communities, energy used to do work or dissipated as heat cannot be consumed by other organisms. They finally lost or enter the ecosystem.